What you are hearing, folks, is for the first time in history the public revelation of the origin, the history, the dogma, and the identity of those who operate in secret to bring about a worldwide totalitarian socialist government. They are known to Christians as Mystery Babylon. It is an ancient religion. Those of you who are smart enough to know what is transpiring here know that these are historic broadcasts and by making these broadcasts I have sealed my fate. The sun enters each heavenly sign or house of the zodiac in what is called the 30th degree and leaves at the 33rd degree. Thus God's Son is said by the ancients to begin his ministry at 30 and dies at 33. A Freemason is not told the truth of the object of his worship until he attains the 30th degree. And this is why the highest degree in Freemasonry is the 33rd degree, for no one can rise higher than the sun. When viewing the shimmering rays of sunlight on a body of water at dawn or sunset, one can still see today how God's sun walks on water. It was well understood by ancient man that our weather was caused and controlled by the sun. It was a simple fact that God's sun had the power to control storms at will. The ancient Egyptians taught that he did this as he rested in his heavenly boat while crossing the sky. Thus we read that God's Son quieted the tempest, our great storm on the sea, while in his boat. Which boat? The boat of Isis. Ra, the sun god, also known as Osiris, in the bark of millions of years in which he traversed the heavens, he wears on his head and accompanies a vast sun disk symbolizing his powers as lord of the heavens. The boat formed of a serpent bears his eye, and the god is seated on a pedestal representing Mayet, the divine order. Folks, when we stop to realize that every single king, prince, lord, governor, dictator, despotic ruler, civil and social institution, national flag, coat of arms, educational institution, military medal, award, organizational insignia, medallion, badge, emblem, citation, trophy, banner, pendant, political standard, our ensign, agency of government, our religion, uses the sun as a primary symbol, then it can truly be said, in the mystery school that God's Son is, quote, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, unquote. A worldwide totalitarian socialist government. They are known to Christians as Mystery Babylon. It is an ancient religion. Those of you who are smart enough to know what is transpiring here, know that these are historic broadcasts and by making these broadcasts I have sealed my faith. A worldwide totalitarian socialist government. with you, Gorse Nexus Podcast. I'm super excited to have uh, Shane Radliff on. Really interesting guy. Uh, he does a lot of great stuff in the movement. Runs Liberty Attack publications, all kinds of books in there. He's written for a Gorsh Nexus. Uh, he's done some editing work for us. Um, just a uh, overall cool dude. Very interesting guy. He's got a lot of stuff going on. So um, definitely want to bring him on the show. How you doing, Shane? Hey, brother. Uh, doing uh, doing quite well. Uh, it's yeah, great. Uh, great weekend here at uh, the homestead of Veritas Pasnia and. Uh, Always a pleasure to connect with you. So um, it's been a few years, I think, since we've chatted, at least three or four years, a, a long time, way too long. So, um, yeah, it's uh, good to connect again. Excited to chat. Yeah, man, way too long. Yeah, and uh, super, super glad to have you on the on the show again, for sure, man. Um, 
I want to get into, um, I want to start with Vanuism. I, I know that we covered, a, I know that we covered it a little bit in the, in the other podcast that we did, but, um, but you, you know, when you hear somebody say, you know, I, I'm, I'm an agorist, uh, or like I'm, I'm a Vanuist. Is that how you say it? Like Vanuist or, uh, um, yeah, Vanuin, Vanuist, Vanu. Yeah, that may not actually yeah, yeah. be the right way to pronounce it. I'm finding out after reading all the old Vanu zines, but that's how we've been pronouncing it for like four years. So we'll just pronounce it wrong. Go with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just pronounce it wrong. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, when you hear somebody say I'm an agorist or Vanuist or both, you're like, holy crap! You, you know, uh, first thing that goes through my mind is like, you know, this person's you know elite, you know, and and I think that's what Kant can pretty much consider, like, you know, Gorst were like advanced libertarians or, um, you know, and uh, but when somebody says they're Gorst and Vanuist, you know, it's like, you know, th this guy, you know, really knows his stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, so yeah, um, going to into a little bit of, of what Vanu um, has and, and what it is, man. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So um, just definitions real quick. So Vanu is basically um, basically lifestyle changes in pursuance of an invulnerability to coercion um, as opposed to, um, say, freedom or liberty. Um, so it was a freedom strategy developed, or I guess, uh, um, founded by a guy named, pseudonymously named Rayo uh, back in the 60s and 70s. And uh, he was uh, he was a very, very radical guy. He, uh, in the late 60s, decided to move out of his apartment into a camper mat on a pickup truck and uh, started writing for uh, various libertarian scenes. Um, Vonnie wasn't, a I guess, wasn't a thing until, you know, later on in the 60s, but he was a part of uh, something called the Free Owls Project, which I guess would have been mid-1960s. And uh, they were they were the early seasteaders. Uh, they were trying to come up with a model for you know having a network of free aisles with uh, you know voluntary government and like the the vein of Ayn Rand because you can't escape that um, in the '60s in libertarian circles. So yeah, it was uh, um, that was uh, you know a really interesting first project. I actually just released the audio the full audiobook for that. Um, and uh, you know there's uh, um, not all of it's necessarily you know relevant, but um, there are some things. Um, that we might actually use here for the the, uh, the free public capacity. There's some good ideas in there, and uh, there's one chapter on competitive dispute resolution, which is one of the biggest things um, thing that's necessary. And you know, in addition to like private defense, private security, um, I think uh, yeah, private art, you know, um, competitive dispute resolution, alternative dispute resolution is really important. Um, if uh, you know we're going to be gathering in physical space and time, and if we're going to you know show that we have you know viable voluntary alternatives to um, to the first realm status, um, you know violent coercive alternative, you know not just the the, the status quo today. Um, we've got our own alternatives, and they can work. And I think there's an interesting model there. But anyway, um, so yeah, it's through through radical lifestyle changes. And Rayo, um, after after the free isles didn't really pan out, and uh, you know, the, the world only kept getting crazier, which is, you know, we, we can certainly attest to um, in our day and age. And uh, he, you know, uh, pursued vandalism first, like I said, and then uh, he realized it wasn't enough freedom for him. That if you had to, you know, beg the state to give you a driver's license and, pay, you know, registration and um, and then driving on, you know, government roads, having to deal with bludgies, uh, you know, cops, enforcers. Um, he 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 kind of realized it wasn't as you know a freeable lifestyle, but um, it's a great interim lifestyle to get you um, to get you out of like uh, um, renting is super expensive nowadays, massively expensive, and uh, you know housing mortgages um, you know they're expensive and they come with their own privacy you know privacy you know problems um, you know with your with identity and such and so again taxes and all of those things that um, you know Venuans try to avoid so. Yeah, after you know, after realizing that he he pursued a um, wilderness vanu and uh, basically split time in, in uh, his RV and uh, in, a, in a polyethylene a tent, so just uh, just a tent out in the Siskiyou uh, the Siskiyou region, northern California, southern Oregon, and uh, you know tried to uh, you know correspond with some some folks, put out a lot of really really incredible publications like Vanu Life, um, which I acquired the entirety of Vanu Life and, and all the other Vanu zines uh, a few years back, and I just finished digitizing Vanu Life, um, which is just a massive wealth of, of uh, information on self-liberation. It's crazy it was published. like These were from like 1970 to like 1974 or something um, was when this ran, and it's, it's, it's wild how, how, relevant, how relevant it still is and how, how uh, you know, radical it still is today. 
Um, and uh, yeah, eventually Rayo disappeared, and um, Jim Stum, the guy who was kind of the the archivist of all of, all of these things, released uh, um, Rayo disappeared in 1974, and in 1983, Jim Stum released uh, Vaughn of the Search Personal Freedom, which was um, a, 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 an anthology of Rayo's articles that you know ones that Jim found most important to introduce the idea of Vanu um, and kind of the lifestyle changes and, and such. But uh, yeah, so this ni 1984 uh, was when that book was released. And it was kind of, you know, Vanu was pretty much dormant uh, until uh, 2015 or 2016 when, or I guess it was more properly 2016. We talked about it on Libertarian Attack Radio, uh, covered and I. But um, we kind of revived it. Um, we talked about it. We did, you know, six or seven hours of it uh, as part of the direct action series on LUA Radio uh, back in 2016, I think it was. And then, uh, yeah, we started the Vonnie podcast in 2017 and, uh, you know, now we're expanding Vonnie. So, um, that's, that's kind of the long and short of it. And I guess to, to get, to just speak a little bit more to the action behind it. Um, I mentioned, you know, Vanna Madison, Wilderness Vonnie, um, security culture, uh, crypto anarchy, like a lot of the, um, I know you're, I know you, you, you and your audience are into a lot of, um, you know, cryptography and privacy enhancing solutions, um, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies and, and things along those lines. Um, so that would all be Vonnie. Basically anything, um, anything you can do. Um, to make yourself more vulnerable to public coercers, governments, and private coercers, just private violators of person and property. And uh, yeah, I guess that's a, a pretty good overview on, on Vanu, I think. Um, but yeah, if, if anyone's interested, we, yeah, we do the, the Vanu podcast, vanupodcast.com. And um, there's lots of free audio books on the podcast feed, a lot of, uh, lots of, you know, obviously the season one on philosophy, season two on the practice of Vanu in the 60s and 70s, and then season three, um, which is our ongoing development of Vanu in the, in the modern day and age. Um, there's a lot of resources there, and I definitely recommend people check it out if they're interested. Yeah, definitely check it out. Um, it's 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 great stuff. I mean, uh, you know, I, I try to practice the Vanu lifestyle as much as possible, um, you know, wh whether it be like with, with what I've done with my homestead in um, in Mexico, you know, uh, Vanuism was a part of my decision to go ahead with it for sure. And, um, you know, so I don't have rent. I've always got a home, um, you know, no landlord can kick me out or, or raise my rates due to hyperinflation or anything like that. So, so I'll, I'll never be homeless here. And, uh, and then, yeah, in terms of like, you know, um, it's, it's good, definitely good to do it, you know, the financial part of it, uh, you know, make sure your books are squared away and all that. And uh, that way, you know, if, if governments ever do come after you, you're, you're all set. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really a lifestyle that, uh, that I do and, and that I encourage others to, to look at as well. So I think we talked about this last time, but, you know, since this is the Agoras Nexus podcast, um, ethical enclave trading was, uh, was an article that Rayo wrote um, in the late 1960s, which, um, yeah, ethical enclave trading is essentially agorism. Um, just before, yeah, before even Konkin, um, I think yeah, when when I read that article, Konkin was like seventeen or eighteen. Um, so yeah, people go to vanipodcast dot com and just type in ethical enclave, then you can find uh, you know the article um, episodes, etc. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know, practicing in the counter economy is definitely you know a Vanu act, um, limiting your your uh, I guess visibility and availability to the coercers in the financial realm, and then obviously just for you know financial independence self liberation purposes uh licenses and registration and all that stuff is very expensive so um if you can do business without acquiring those things you can uh you know save your fellow man a lot of money and you can uh you know even even be better off yourself so it's you know it's a it's a win win for everybody as uh, you know any agorist would know but um so yeah agorism is definitely a part of Fanu, um most certainly yeah absolutely i think they um i think they they kind of go hand in hand for sure I don't see how, how they couldn't really, um, it's great that, you know, they synergize on each other. So, um, what now, uh, you have mentioned Pasnia, uh, I don't know if our audience remembers or, or if, if the, the new people know what that is, but, um, but yeah, go into the free, <laughs> the free Republic of, uh, of Pasnia, if, if you could. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, um, this was, um, so basically in 2020, I, um, my buddy Henza came out and I, I wanted to try and host a freedom festival here, um, here at, at the homestead. So somehow I, I, I organized it all at that time. I was on key base. Key, key base is kind of, you know, um, that's a long, it shows you how long ago this was, um, key base, I, I guess, I guess some people probably still use key base, but it was a long time ago. Um, organized the entire thing on key base and, uh, you know, ended up having, uh, you know, about 30 people out, 
um, at the homestead. Um, so yeah, it started out initially as just a freedom festival. And then like a month later, I was declaring, uh, you know, my homestead to be an independent property and coming up with the, you know, the overall idea for, um, the free Republic of Pasnia. So basically the, the idea is, um, it's, uh, geographically independent quote unquote country, um, or, a, a or a second realm network, a parallel network is another way to think about it. So our 22 acre homestead here, an hour and a half east of St. Louis, uh, Veritas Pasnia. Um, yeah, it's the Veritas node of, uh, you know, of Pasnia. And then, yeah, there's, you know, there's one in Colorado, there's uh, one in Michigan, there's uh, apparently some over in Europe too that I, I guess have kind of popped up on the map. Um, but basically it's, it's just a parallel network, you know, under the guise of a country. Um, so, you know, obviously, you know, as any good country, uh, would have, we've got passports, um, you know, we, we offer, uh, we call them stakeholder memberships, basically S T E A K holder, um, memberships. And, um, so yeah, people, uh, you know, become, uh, become stakeholders and get a passport then get a flag. They can get, um, Pasnia beach towel too. Now, um, that was a, a new offering as of a couple years ago, you know, dude, and, and those what, passports, what they, like. they look, they're like legit, dude. They're like for real legit. And, uh. I remember that I I definitely want to get one for sure, but um, <laughs> but I not only want to get one, but I want to try to get it like stamped, you know, like use it to like cross the border mm -hmm. and shit, and to like legitimize it. Like, dude, what do you mean it's fake? Like, you know, Mexico, Mexico fucking stamped that shit, you know, like, <laughs> right. um, you know, definitely try to get it like stamped, definitely stamped and uh, stuff like that. But that, I didn't know you guys had multiple multiple locations that's pretty cool oh yeah for sure for sure um yeah the, the idea is an overall network so there's there's home so uh um the big project uh, early this year um i had so i've been putting out you know circulating a form for the past couple of years for people to add you know locations to the eventual you know pasdia map and directory and um the first one's for the private vetted folks um you know, it's a it's a vetted network. Um, you know, based off Vaughn and Security Culture principles. So it's a vetted network. You have to be like the so we've got our initial stakeholders that came to the very first Vaughn Fest, and uh, so only those folks. There might be fifty or sixty people now that have access to the map. But yeah, that came out in January. The uh, the map and directory. There's like thirty something locations on there, ranging from homesteads to um, you know guerrilla gardening plots to local health food stores to um, you know local raw milk suppliers. Um, there's a, uh, I guess, a city squat spot for a, uh, tri for a traveling Vietnam nomad um, somewhere in the Midwest. I'm not going to disclose anything more than that, but, um, but yeah, there's there's also anything that could be a value to um, a self liberator. Any, you know, um, there's a lot of you know services that are valuable that have been co opted by this, you know, the first realm, and we can still have all of those and without interaction with those privacy violating and coercive institutions. So, um, yeah, that's the I guess the overarching goal of the Pasni network is. To replace all the necessary institutions of the first realm, um, the first realm, the realm of uh, coercion, deception, et cetera, you know, onto a, a framework of, of voluntarism and truth. Which is the second realm, right? The, the, <laughs> the first realm's pretty much just like the, the statist realm, um, and the, the second mm -hmm. realm is just like the the liberty realm, in, in essence, right? I mean, is, in, mm -hmm. do I have that correctly? Pretty much. Yep. Ex exactly. Yeah. The second realm is the the realm where autonomy is respected, and you know, not only respected, yeah. but you know, encouraged, um, in, in every in every facet. So, um, so that so the Pasnia map and directory was one one of those infrastructure things that's finally there. And I'm I'm the next step for that is I'm going to put out a public one. Um, that's uh, it'll be yeah, totally public, um, available to to anyone and everyone. And uh, bigger infrastructure projects too. Um, like for the past seven months, we've offered, uh, at, I guess, it, yeah, Pasnia.chat is the website. And uh, it's our, self, our own self hosted Jitsi, um, Jitsi server. Just like you can on Zoom, um, people can go and you know, start their own chats, uh, Jitsi chats, encrypted, um, self hosted, you know, quote unquote. It's on a, it's on a, um, it's on a VPS right now, so it's not self-hosted here. But um, it's uh, it's it's there for for folks, and and we're actually going to double down on that and make it um, six times better. We're going to get six times more amount of RAM. So um, yeah, passing chat does not work right now. Um, it's been down for like the past week or so. I'm not sure what's going on with it, but we're we're already moving on, moving to a bigger and better solution. And yeah, a lot more again, like in anything in the first realm, um, like net, you know, so-called you know, like Netflix and Spotify, um, you know, fascist tube, uh, you know, various podcatchers, um, yeah. we're basically self-hosting everything. You know, I guess basically making you know making it where you don't have to interact with those services, and you can you can get privacy-friendly alternatives um, for these things. So, um, yeah, there's it's it's a big bit, but again, everything, anything, and everything. Um, we're gonna we're gonna live these principles in the here and now, and we're gonna build out a network um, 
wherein you know nomads uh, you know nomadism is a big part of vanu um there are already a lot of nomads in the network whenever whenever a map and directory is out there um people can start playing trade routes um and it's like it's it's another way financial independence is like the it's the hardest thing um for for a lot of folks um, breaking away financially from the first realm and this is one of those ways and you could have you know second realm drivers a lot of people drive for their jobs anyway it's like use your vein for second realm purposes instead and uh we'll trade you you can facilitate trade amongst home sets all over the the ussa um got plenty of that going to mexico uh, plenty of that going to canada i mean it's 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 really um I need to I need to go more in depth on it. Um, we're uh, on the Vani podcast. The next one, Kyle and I are recording tomorrow, is going to be we're calling it the Great Pasnia Rundown. And it's been like a year or two since I've really put out anything extensive publicly. And um, since the founding of of the Free Republic of Pasnia, the visions come together a lot. So, um, so yeah, we're recording that tomorrow. Um, so I guess it's July twenty first, and it'll come out in the next you know week or so. And uh, yeah, I definitely recommend folks. Folks, check that out because we're going to go through it for an hour or two. And Kyle is Kyle isn't even um, Kyle and I, my my old Bonnie podcast co-host, and I just kind of started recording again, so he doesn't really know that much about it. Um, and he was uh, he's been you know the biggest proponent of Bonnie and security culture for the past like decade. So I'm excited to get his thoughts on it. There's a lot there. I'll, I'll stop talking for a moment. Oh no, you're good, man. Uh, yeah, well, definitely love all the information that you're giving out. Um, I don't think I asked this question before, but um, but how did you get into all, you know, how, how did you get into all this, like, like the Liberty movement, um, you know, libertarianism, like agorism, like, like, uh, you know, and, and, and what quote unquote radicalized you per, per se? Yeah, sure. Um, but I guess it, it's, it's been ever since I was 18 or 19. Um, I, uh, I stumbled across, uh, the movie, uh, I guess a documentary on Netflix, uh, 9-11 loose change when I was like 18. 18 or yeah i think i think i was 17 or 18 and um you know watched it and i'd never never uh, never come across any information like that before it didn't you know didn't didn't ever really think about you know the government at all um really except when they you know uh you know pulled me over for you know bullshit tickets and stuff um i really never thought about government or or anything and uh you know it wasn't immediate i watched it and that was kind of you know the the first exposure um but it wasn't uh, it wasn't up until um you know probably six months or a year later when um when i kind of got pushed back onto the path a little bit and and even um yeah, even way further than um than 911 i found i found a, a 9 hour presentation by bill cooper a portable presentation and i also found his uh, prediction on june 28 2001 uh where he predicted uh, 911 and that uh, whatever they're going to blame on bin laden don't you even believe it um he was the real one that predicted it alex jones wasn't for anyone that's uh um, alex jones kind of stole um stole bill's prediction um, but, uh, um, and they had their own little, you know, their own little squabble back then. But yeah, Bill Cooper was the one that radicalized me, um, for sure. Um, so I came across him and, uh, yeah, watched, uh, there's, you know, maybe a dozen document, a dozen uh, presentations on, on YouTube that, uh, you know, I watched them all. And then, uh, I've came across, uh, hour of the time.com where at one time, I'm not sure if it's still around, um, but his entire 2000 hours of radio show archives from 1990 to, um, 2001, um, we're all there. And, um, uh, so I was, a, I, I worked at a moving company at that time. And all I did was for eight, 10, 12 hours a day, just sit there and listen to Bill Cooper. Um, and obviously, you know, we're, you know, talking to Gorism and Vanu and, um, you're know, getting into them of like of anarchism and, uh, yeah, he was a constitutionalist. There's a lot of talk about militias and all that, but, you know, I, I, uh, but then obviously the deeper, deeper, you know, conspiratorial realms per se. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's, that was the case until I guess up until 2012 or so I've, I'd finished the archive already. And, um, you know, Bill Cooper was the motivation, um, as well. Um, and one of those presentations, he's like, if you want to, you know, um, basically to, he's basically, you know, employing people to start a radio show. It's like, all right, I'm gonna start a radio show. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, February uh, 8th of 2015 was the, uh, inaugural live broadcast of uh, LUA radio. Mm -hmm. And, um, I very and it started as you know more like uh, the same vein as Bill Cooper um, conspiracies from a constitutionalist perspective. I wasn't an anarchist at that time yet, or an agorist, or um, anything of the sort. But uh, yeah, it was only a few months later. I you know found anarchism, agorism, the various anarchic schools of thought, which again, yeah, agorism would be one of those, and uh, did the direct action series and or I guess plant started planning uh, the direct action series off of our free member of direct action. Um, so yeah, I guess that that was the first thing I noticed. I got into the realm of you know. Um, freedom of anarchy and no one is really talking about solutions 
So very, very soon after, you know, I, I did, I went down, I did, I did the Austrian economic stuff. I, I read human action by Mises. I read the Rothbards. I, I did all that. And then I was, you know, I was like, okay, so yeah, this is obviously the way to go, but like, what are we going to do about it? So that's been my, um, my thing ever since, um, from the Freedom Bill of Direct Action to the Direct Action series on LUA Radio. And then, uh, yeah, the Vani podcast after, and, uh, I guess that's the point, um, around 20, late 20, 2018, after about a year and a half of uh, the Vani podcast is when the action part of it really, really started for me. Um, I was, uh, I moved down, um, spontaneously to live with my coast, Kyle Reardon, um, in Austin and, uh, it was for only for a couple months and, uh, the living situation changed again in my, my buddy, Jason Henza, um, who's, uh, at that time split, split time in the U S and also in Acapulco, um, and uh, he asked me if I wanted to, you know, ride down to Acapulco with him um, from Austin and uh, go uh, stay out there for, a, you know, for a month and a half or a couple of months until until Christmas. So I went down to Acapulco for, for a little while. Um, it was uh, first I got just, you know, hit the road, you know, we'll do a little, little traveling and strategic relocation. And uh, it was uh, it was amazing. And that was like basically the last time I worked, a, I guess, a survival society job, um, like an actual nine to five job. And basically, I mean, it wasn't a good financial situation at all. But, um, you know, I just just kind of went for it and ended up back in, um, you know, back in uh, where I am now at the homestead. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of the long story short and I'm still here building and and, uh, you know, building building liberation every day. So I guess, yeah, that's kind of the uh, there's a lot of details intermixed there. It's been a long long path but um yeah cool yeah man uh yeah it's it's we're really good story like um uh i i think you wrote a piece on did you write a piece on uh on will cooper uh on our site i'm pretty sure you did uh, i can't remember um but, uh, maybe uh i think i wrote I, I wrote up something for uh in memorial of his uh dead when he was shot or killed so i think there might have been um i think that might might have been on ended up there too yeah i think you're right yeah yeah and uh yeah it was if man this was uh years ago since i read it but i remember that being a good piece so i'll have to um i'll have to reread it but uh, uh and i, and I, sorry, yeah, I, just, I, sh I should mention if, if anyone's interested in the entire bill cooper collection um i got scared a i got scared what was it a, a year and a half ago now um because it was the hour of the time website started to get kind of, you know, not reliable. And I was, my worst fear was those 1400 episodes, 2000 hours disappearing. So, uh, um, I thought about going through each, you know, 1400 episodes and, you know, saving each file manually, but thankfully I called in my buddy, Matthew Raymer, and, uh, he wrote up a script real quick. And, um, within like five minutes, I had the whole five gigabytes. It was 1990s. So it was like five gigabytes for 1400 episodes. Crazy. Um, so that's available um, on the uh, Vani podcast website. If you just yeah, go to the vonniepodcast.com, go to the search bar, type in Bill Cooper, and you can have his entire collection. Um, which uh, again, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with all of it now, but like he was, he was a big, a big influence, um, a big, you know, a big influence on me. And uh, there was a, a lot of, a lot of really valuable, um, valuable stuff. And uh, you know, it's always good to have it in an additional place. So feel free to download if you like. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's like a statist and uh, like a minarchist, a constitutionalist. Um, you know, I I think a, a lot of us were at some point in time. But uh, but yeah, it, if he was still alive today, it would be interesting to see like um, where he's at. Because like I thought that during the Obama years, I thought Alex Jones was was eventually going to hit you know at least like super libertarianism or or like anarchism, but. Uh, but it looked like he went the other way, just like uh, he, like he did a mall new, you know. Yeah, for sure. No, it it would be in, it would certainly be interesting. Like I would love to hear Bill's take on a lot of stuff happening today because he wouldn't have. I guarantee you, Bill would not have fallen for the Trump nonsense like uh, like Alex did and has. Um, so that like there's that, and then there's also um, you know, it's fun. Like it's you know going back and you know and like it's going back in the. Um, I guess a radicalist history per se, but um, there's an, a video on YouTube of the spat between Alex Jones and Bill Cooper and Alex Jones lying about Bill Cooper and, and all that. Um, so yeah, Bill never really Ale liked Alex um, from that point, but it's it's interesting when Bill was uh, shot in, I think it was November of 2001, when he was shot and killed, um, the, B Alex was the up and coming one. So like, <laughs> so like obviously my conspiratorial self, like hyper conspiratorial self back then, um, and I, I think it's still probably the case. Um, it'd be interesting to see what see what would happen there because Alex kind of took over for Bill. Um, yeah, took over for yeah, basically just took over his audience essentially. 
Um, so yeah, it'd be, it'd be completely different, you know, completely different world, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious, but we'll ne I guess we'll never know, at least not in this lifetime. Um, I don't remember, uh, exactly the, the details of, of the shooting. Could you go, could you go into that and like, um, uh, do they know who, uh, who shot them or, or anything like that? Oh, Bill. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's, there's no, um, uh, all the details are, are out, are out in the open and, and, and I might get, um, I'll, I'll get really, really close, but uh, there's a documentary called the hour of the time, um, which, uh, was made, I guess, five years after Bill's death. And, um, that's probably the, the it's the best representation of his work. And, uh, yeah, I'd recommend people, people watch that too. But, um, yeah, I guess there was, there was a circumstance, um, it was November of 2001 when he was shot and people thought that it was, um, you know, now it's like, oh, well, November was of, of 02 or 01? 2001, 2001. 2001. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, people, people nowadays kind of theorize like, oh, well, it was obviously because he predicted 9-11. Um, but it was a local, it was, it was local cops. And I, I verified, I interviewed a guy. Um, it's crazy. I never, the people I got in con I've gotten in contact with my first, first ever interview was with a guy named A. Ralph Epperson, uh, who wrote a book in 1985 called the new world order. And Bill interviewed him in like 1994 when I was like two. Um, but I got in contact with a Ralph Epperson somehow, and he sent me his DVDs to host on the LOA YouTube channel. So that's the only place they're available digitally because he sent them to me to, you know, uh, to rip and upload. Um, but Ralph knew Bill, um, and he's from Arizona. And so he, he basically, um, what happened, uh, there was a, a, a local sheriff and Bill had always been, he always said if the cops ever showed up, he would, you know, he would defend himself. Um, so like, I was never, uh, he'd said that a thousand times, you know, he's, he's not afraid to die. Um, was always his, always his thing. So, um, yeah, he apparently threatened the sheriff, um, and he had a warrant out for his arrest and, um, they were serving the warrant and yeah, he went in and, you know, and grabbed the gun. He'd already, by that time, he'd already at the past uh, a year or two ago, um, sent his wife and his daughter away because things were getting yeah really really hot and yeah he was and he he and he was clued in obviously he was clued in um if he predicted 911 in June uh June 28th 2001 and not only did he predict it but he said don't blame no, whatever they're going to blame on bin laden don't you even believe it um so yeah i mean he was he was uh he was definitely clued in he sent his uh, you know wife and, wife and daughter away and um yeah i mean i again i, I don't agree with um with with a lot of what he said and even some of the some of the um, anti-secret society stuff that he went really far into, I've kind of turned a corner on. Um, like, I don't necessarily think like there's not just one monolithic branch of like Ross Christianism, for example. And he just kind of assumed that all of them were evil. And it's like, no, there's, there's bastardized versions of everything, um, everything in life. And this is, yeah, this is one of those areas too. So I've kind of come full circle on that a little bit per se. So it's, it's been, yeah, especially after 2020. So it's, it's, it's been interesting. But yeah. That's, I guess that's, 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 that's a story. Yeah, so he got killed by police in Arizona, right? Yeah, local local sheriff's office, I think. Not even Is, like uh, it wasn't feds or anything. No. Yeah, like uh, it wasn't Maricopa County, was it? <laughs> uh, it was Eager, Arizona, was where Bill lived. Eager, Arizona. Ah, I'm not okay. sure what county, what county that is. But yeah, it wasn't. You know, I, I wish it it would when before I talked to Ralph about it. You know, he kind of you know he kind of you know popped my he popped my airship or popped my balloon. Um, because you know, obviously, I was with everyone else, thinking for sure that you know they were they they had to go after and get him because he was about to release the second Mystery Babylon series. Um, but no, I mean that's that's I think that's the case. Um, he definitely wasn't you know one of their friends by any means, but um, and he maybe and maybe they would have gone after him like later on. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but, not yet. Yeah, it's uh yeah very very interesting. So uh. Give us a take of like what what he thought of um, the secret societies. Again, uh, what you had said you you had done mm -hmm. a, a a complete tur uh, sure. turn on. Yeah. So so Bill Bill's take was basically you know all um, like basically that the Freemasonry is evil. Um, that uh, that basically I guess alchemy would be evil. I guess evil to uh, or at least the. Yeah, I, I guess I won't speak to it. That was his, his last episode was actually on alchemy. Um, I'm going to release that sometime on the Bonnie podcast feed. It was one of his last couple episodes, exactly what I've been look, what I was looking into, like the past like a couple of few years. But um, ba yeah, basically all secret societies are bad. They they hide the information, the knowledge from humanity to control them. And um, it's been this thousand, you know, thousand year plan um, to, you know, start the new world order, essentially. Um the one world communist government, which I guess you could say that, you know, 
the WEF and stuff are kind of they kind of look like that. But um, yeah, that that was kind of his uh, his main his summarizing two thousand hours of of radio, you know, radio of, of radio. Um, it's basically it. They're all evil because they're hiding knowledge from humanity. And uh, but I came across uh, it was uh, Temple of Illuminati documents um, from Ross Crucian's like nineteen oh seven was when it was originally published. And um, it was on um, kind of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Essenes, which were the early pre-Christ Christians. And I opened this thing up, and this was before this is before these revel. This is very. I still held Bill's view at that point um, that you know it's all evil. But I opened it up, and it was just like love and voluntarism and anti-war. And I was like, hold on, are these people anarchists? Like, what's going on here? It's like this, like I. I agree with all this. Like, this is what I've been saying. This is what I've been saying. People I've been, you know, associating with the past, you know, five years, what I've been, you know, doing and talking about. Weird. What's going on here? So that was kind of the first, first mind blowing thing. And there's even a quote. I'll pull it up. I, I'll remember the, um, where it's uh, the episode on ancient second realms that I did, and um, the quote. And this is just just one of many. Quote, the solution which the Essenes offered for economic and social harmony can be applied in every age, the present as well as the past. It contained four factors separating uh, number one and this is just again, just number one, separating from the chaotic conditions of the mass of mankind, which refuses to obey natural and cosmic law End quote. So that was like the um, the Essenes. Um, and this would be yeah, Jesus in the Essenes, essentially, you know, going back, um, you know, going going, you know, going back even to that point where they predicted, you know, Jesus coming back and the, the ancient. Um, I guess the, uh, the original church of Jerusalem, but uh, so yeah, that's the um, that was the main I guess the main catalyst for for the change, and then just just continuing um, you know my own personal personal exploration. Um, Freemasonry changed in 1717 with the Grand Lodge in Britain. Um, Pre 1717 Freemasonry and post 1717 Masonry are completely different things. Um, so I think that's where, and Bill was going like, but he tore through, he read everything and he was kind of working his way back to certain points. I just don't think he'd had time to get back, um, you know, get back to like what was going on, going on necessarily in the 1700s with Freemasonry, maybe not. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the, the change. Um, 1717 is a big year, um, for, yeah, for, for Freemasonry. And then, yeah, you go back to what, the nice Templar what, before that. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Which year was that? Uh, 1717. 1770. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like w when I think of Freemasonry, I think of like um, basically I think of like most of the members not really like knowing exactly like exactly what goes on. And I think they're like very, you know, there's like diff different levels uh, of the secret society and stuff. And I, I think like the lower levels don't really know and they they may do things that people tell them, but they don't really know like exactly. Um, they may not know like why they're doing them or or how it helps the cause or mm -hmm. whatever. But um, but yeah, I think I think most I think most like Freemasonry is definitely definitely bad. Like, but like how is like so this is like a, a different part of Freemasonry, or this is like a part of it, or like what what is like I'm just trying to like wrap my head around. Um, it's yeah yeah it's, it's yeah it's a good question um so yeah like there was um freemasonry was more kind of decentralized before and this was you where you had at the grand lodge of freemasonry which is like the um it's like the united nations of freemasonry today just to put it in in different terminology um but no you're you're exactly right there's uh, uh no freemasons today like it's so it's so co-opted and just what it's so whitewashed um like even even the uh ceremonies that they do um aren't necessarily the same again that's another important factor you know post 1717 is the stuff isn't really even the same anymore but freemasonry a lot of uh, shriners a lot of that's is just a boys club now um it's and uh there's they, they do a lot of uh a lot of like uh community events and fundraising and stuff which is all well and good but it's not like uh um these people aren't going to be able to I mean, they, they aren't, you know, they aren't studying, you know, ancient laws of uh, hermeticism or looking into the Essenes or anything. They don't even know who the Essenes are, probably. Um, so, yeah, it's not it's not anything. Yeah, it's it's, it's even up to like the 32nd or 33rd degrees or um, that's I don't think that's too, you know, too difficult of a of something to achieve. Um, but yeah, when you get into the higher the higher echelons, 
what should be like the uh, Ordo Temp- Templi Orientis. Um, if, you're ever, if anyone's ever seen um, Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut, um, that's basically a documentary on these people. But yeah, like actual, like the 1% of, of, you know, quote unquote Freemasons, um, they're in a lot of other darker, you know, darker stuff. And it wasn't, you know, just like, just, yeah, just Freemasonry. So I hope that answers some of that question. But actually, you ask if there's like a different branch. Um, so like whether 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 you call it like Freemasonry or the Knights Templar or something from like the Eastern traditions, um, there are these uh, these truths that radiates throughout all of these things. And there there are some that are, you know, further away from, you know, like the original truths, per se. Um, there's some that are, you know, closer to it and some that are further away. So again, it's not a, it's not a black and white answer. Um, but yeah, any, any Freemason lodge, you're probably not going to find, find much of this stuff. Like Knights Templar, Roscrucians, you might get into some of this stuff. Um, especially, um, like maybe Roscrucianism, but, uh, um, hard to put into words, hard to explain. I actually have not, I've not really talked about this publicly much. Um, but it has been my focus for the past, past three or four years trying to assimilate this. I'll stop there. If uh, any other questions that come up, yeah, feel free to ask about it. I, I, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I want to get into the the like nomadic trading. So basically, if somebody is already transporting something, um, and they may have like some extra room, they could transport something else for like if somebody needs something in Pasnia, right? So like mm-hmm. whatever they trade, uh, I guess. Mm-hmm. Could you go into like some some details in terms of like nomadic trading in, in Pasnia and uh in, in any of that? Sure, yeah, yeah. Um so we call it our Pasnia Department of Transportation. And um and right now, uh this was another um another uh infrastructure thing that is available now. Um, but along with the Pasnia Map and Directory in January, I also put together uh it's called Pasnia List. And I, it's like the Craigslist of the second realm. So people can go to Pasnia.com forward slash I think it's just list pasnia.com forward slash list. And, you know, you, you can list whatever, um, different, ca- different categories, um, second realm categories. So it's the Craigslist second, second realm. So it's a little different, but obviously the same thing, like, you know, seeking work or, you know, looking for help or all that, st- all that basic stuff is there. Um, but I also threw the department of transportation on there for the moment and no one's really used it. And I understand it's not, it's not how I, um, it was a one click, basically like two minutes to toss it in there or maybe even like 20 seconds. So I just went ahead and did it. But the eventual goal is to find um, the skeleton um, for because there's there's obviously like phone apps out there that exist today um, for like logistics network, like logistics companies. And um, if you find the skeleton for that, you can program in anything you want to um, where it's like, you know, you open up this app on your phone and it's, you know, the Pasnia Department of Transportation. It's got the, you know, the Pasnia flag with the, the van in there um, and people open it up and it shows like, uh, you know, uh, um, Thomas Paine is going from Keene, New Hampshire. And we'll be traveling through um, this Freedom Festival in uh, Midfest, Oklahoma. Uh, and then he'll be traveling to Vanu Fest and uh, uh, at Veritas. Uh, and then he's going to make a, a run down to uh, um, down to Sekistan in Tennessee um, and pick up some goods, pick up some pickles there and go take them to, um, you know, take a, a, do- a load of a dozen, pi- two dozen pickles over to Montana where there's another another Pasnia. Um, whatever, you know, I don't know what all that, like whatever, anything and everything, um, I guess, can be shipped if if the shipper and the driver agree on it. So, um yeah, that's. I guess that's the that's that's the vision. I mean, logistics and transportation is a, a major part of of the first realm, and um, you know it'll be a major part of, of ours too, especially in a you know a geographically independent um, country. Um, so yeah, it's uh, that's that's kind of the the, the longest short. I don't know what else. Um, see if there's any other any other details. No, uh, yeah, um, I mean, um, man, I don't know. it's yeah. great. It's great, man. It's like a you know it's like a decentralized country in, in essence. I think that's really cool. So exactly. That's yeah, that's the idea for sure. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, tell us about, uh, about, uh, Vani Fest. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, so Vani Fest five, um, this year, uh, will take place from September 30th to October 7th, uh, here at the Veritas node of the free Republic. Um, obviously it's a vetted network. So you got, uh, yeah, there's you can't just it's not just like public. Not anyone can just come, um, but it's not super hard to get vetted. Um, basically, the, the idea is if you want to come out here, we've got to I've got to know you personally. We've got to know you personally um, or we have to know someone in common that will vouch for your reputation. 
Um, and it's usually easy to do, even if, um, uh, even just like digitally, you know, the, the networks, the network of the communities are growing, but it's still not that large. So usually you can find someone like, oh, you know, you know, so-and-so like, uh, oh yeah, I, I did this. Like, oh yeah, I stayed with them for like six months. And then you reach out to them and they're like, oh yeah, no, that, that person's great. And it's like, okay, well never met either of you, but, um, you're vetted, um, is so yeah, just to, 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 to make it just trying to, some people think it's like a, a huge obstacle to get vetted and, Um, we're obviously not just going to let anyone in, but it's, again, it's not hard to get vetted. Um, and yeah, so, uh, um, it's a week long event. Um, want people to get here and, you know, settle in, uh, settle in in the second realm. And, uh, we don't have like, uh, necessarily scheduled talks or anything like that. So although this year there, there, there might be one scheduled talk, um, on Friday or Saturday evening. And I don't know if I want to, I'm not going to tease it. I can't, I can't do it. Um, cause then it might not happen. Um, I'm I'm keeping stuff really close to the vest. This so there there's there's a, a few good conf really really good confirmations I've gotten so far, um and um but otherwise the the idea is people come out here um they can learn that they can you know check out the homes that we've got uh, Aura's got a number of uh, really great gardens um she's um yeah she's she's a wizard at, at at the gardening people can you know learn um learn about all that um there's always self liberation activities first year we uh we assembled a 3d printer and uh you know got it testing out there underneath the uh, the carport outside um pat henry is given uh um self defense training um what well, pistol training essentially um here on the property um what else is there there's there, there's always yeah, there there's always a, there's always a ton um but the idea is you'll get on the second realm there's the the entertainment and the interaction aspect which is crucially important and then we, we usually just you know add in a few possible activities whether we oh, land processing we usually do that um when people are here um people can you know see how see the process of of you know processing a lamb um lots of stuff in the realm of self-sufficiency but um yeah it's not just not just about fun we're here to have fun but we're also here to learn and, and actually you know um take some knowledge home and apply it so um yeah that's vani fest if anyone is interested in coming out uh especially you know goris nexus is a great nexus email uh coordinator at .com, um or you can dm me on uh, telegram simplex uh, or wherever there's um yeah we'll get connected uh and uh would love to have anyone out here um that has forsworn the, that has verifiably forsworn the use of coercion uh and that we can you know just trust to be um kind loving and peaceful um is is yeah is the objective we've, we've done a great job the past four years so we aren't changing anything yet um other other possible activities uh around that time there's usually uh mushroom foraging uh potentialities um turkey tails available all the time and then there's uh Hen of the Woods, I think, is that is uh, one that comes out at that time here. Um, so yeah, mushroom foraging, hiking, uh, fishing, swimming, um, rhino rides in the woods with paradise, um, or a yeah, side by side rides in the woods with paradise. Um, lots of lots of lots of uh, lots of really great stuff. Um, great people, and uh, we'd love to have anyone anyone out here for sure. Yeah, man, that that lamp processing sounds like something I need to do myself. Like uh, I want to eventually once my uh, some of my smaller trees start to grow. Uh, I want to try to get like goats or, or something, you know, to, to help me clean up all the fruit that I'll have falling in, in future years. But um, hopefully if, if everything goes according to plan, you never know uh, years out. But yeah, it would be cool to have like some some goats or something cleaning up some of my fruit tree stuff and stuff like that. So yeah, it, like any kind of animal processing, like lamb or goat is something that I want to try to, get into personally um cool man uh well tell us about liberty under attacks i mean you got how did you you so you started liberty under attacks like right around the time um to, to basically publish like radio stuff right and you've got um all different kinds of stuff on there uh actually one of my favorite books it's um it's got like it's like a fiction um it's called hashtag Agora. It's really cool. Um, definitely check that out. But uh, but yeah, tell us about uh, about Liberty Under Attacks and and some of the books you have and and how you uh, came came to found it, man. For sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so I mentioned that it, it was originally Liberty Attack Radio, so I went live radio yeah. and then to LUA podcasts. Uh, and then I basically just shoved all of the content was essentially the same. I I'm, I. Maintained two podcast feeds for a little while, and I realized it was um, not a smart move. 
So all the podcasts just moved over to, um, and all that sort of content moved over to bonniepodcast.com. And at that same time, I was writing um, my first, my, I guess my only book at this point, um, Bonnie the Search Personal Freedom. And uh, I, I mean, I didn't do a lot of research. Thankfully, I, you know, it didn't do too much because I would, it would have been a waste of time. There were no like liberty focused publishers out there um, or anything like that at that time. So I, I, uh, I, I wrote my book and just decided I'd start liberty type, liberty type publications. Um, kind of like the passing idea. It wasn't really like anything planned out. Goddamn grateful that I did it. Um, so yeah, Vaughn and the Search for Social Freedom was my first book, or my only book. And then I, I also republished, hashtag Agora was just a dot .txt document posted on the anarplex.net website, which is not up anymore. It was just a dot .txt document published anonymously. <laughs> and it's an amazing book. Um, yeah, it's so good. And I was, and I was like, okay, well, screw it. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to republish it. So I, I republished it. And the first one, I didn't do any, I didn't do much formatting and it was kind of garbage. I was learning. I'm sorry. Um, but um, that eventually got fixed thanks to um, some prompting comments from uh, the Amazon reviews, which again, I'm happy they mentioned it because there's a better version up there now. Um, so I don't even know, which, I don't even know a, which version I got, but I got, I got one like, um, what was it? I think around like 2020 or something. Yeah. There, there might've been like, there might have been a bunch of typos in there and stuff. Um, the complaint is valid, but um, again, this is a .txt document published anonymously on Aniplex.net, a site that no one ever visited. So, um, again, like the expectations should yeah should should be lower for. Uh, but anyway, it's whatever. Um, so yeah, like the, so that so there was uh, my book hashtag Agora and the second round book on strategy, which was another one of those published on Aniplex um, with a guy uh, uh, who's I don't think he's been on Twitter for a couple of years, like Frank Braun um, as well. But uh, he, uh, um, they published this book on Interplex. Um, I interviewed him a couple times in the Vonnie podcast. And before that, I messaged him, asked him if I could publish it as a book. And he was, yeah, go for it. And if you want to send me a Bitcoin donation here or there, like, that's cool. So, like, those were the, that was the original inspiration. And then, yes, um, there were various uh, Vonnie Zanary publications. Um, I mentioned Jim Stum earlier and acquiring, you know, this massive tome of Vonnie when, libertarian literature from the 60s and 70s so i've been digitizing that for the past four or five years putting it out um, all of it's available for free uh, but if people want paperback versions i don't like reading off a screen i like to be able to easily take a book out in the woods or wherever um, you know wherever i want to read but uh yeah, um, so sometimes you definitely have to have just that paperback feel you know or, or that, that book feel like you're turning pages um you know it's funny about the book hashtag gora is that uh when i was reading it i just i just I couldn't stop thinking about Karate Kid because I, I think the guy's name is uh, like L Larusso or something. Uh, the same, Daniel, yeah, Daniel Larusso. Is, yeah, I think it's yeah, the same it, name. It, yeah, I think it's the same. So yeah, that, that's <laughs> I thought that was funny, but um, but yeah, it's it's definitely definitely a good book, and I I definitely recommend people check it out. Uh, it's, it's on Liberty Under Tax. What what else do you guys have up there? Over yeah. There? Um, so uh, in the same vein, I'll start with kind of the Agoras fiction. Agoras fiction is like something that I, I love and am and, and always inspired by, um, like hashtag Agora, um, Alongside Night, um, things like that are hugely inspirational. They're fiction, but at the same time, they, prov they, they provide a lot of potentialities for um, ways we could build freedom in the future. Um, there's a uh, one of our original LUA publications clients, um, one of our authors, uh, Matthew Watecki, has the Brushfire series, uh, Brushfire and 2048. Uh, 2048 is the most recent re release, and this is the Agoras, the Agoras Nexus podcast. So um, it's it's the 2048 is the year that that Konkin mentioned um, specifically. Um, so he he ba he he kind of set the stage of the second book um to i think it's uh um will be staged staged where it's basically they've got control over their few areas but um otherwise people can basically live free so kind of like today like they've got san francisco and new york city and chicago and places like that but um that's that's kind of the the inspiration for us so I'd, i i mean brush fire and 2048 are amazing i just just actually put up in the past couple of days the hardcover bundle um it's one of our first it's, i think it's our only our only our first uh Recover bundle um, and brushwire 2048 are available um, in that fashion. Otherwise, yeah, there's uh, um, a lot of great uh, freedom philosophy books. Um, there's uh, um, a lot of great, uh, yeah, again, the Vanu zine, they're all available uh, if you want to learn more about Rayo and, and the liberating freedom strategy of Vanu. And uh, we've got, uh, I guess, some spirituality and, and, and self help type stuff. Um, one of our clients um, wrote a book on, uh, on cannabis um, as the divine feminine and Coke. 
um, coca, like the original coca leaf as the divine masculine. So people are interested in topics like that. I mean, all, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of stuff in, in terms of books. But uh, we also offer uh, beyond just books, uh, privacy tools. Um, our good friend, uh, Jamin Baconic, oh, has been hard, hardware hacking uh, Lenovo ThinkPads and other technology um taking out the in intel management engines um from the think pads putting in an open source vetted um, alternative and then throwing something like linux um, whatever distribution or something like that on there and uh i guess our a big thing the past couple of few years has been uh the ghost phones um we sell calyx os and graphene um uh, uh, google pixel 4a's and uh they are i think they're like three three hundred something dollars um it's compared to the cost of phones um not bad, um, not bad at all. Um, and uh, yeah, and they're uh, they're, they're completely yeah. private. They're like you know privacy phones. Uh, Degoogled, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, if you guys know Graphene OS, um, it's only for like Pixel phones and uh, really cool stuff. But, you know, I definitely say get away from Google because they're you know. Uh, I think today they're probably like like just another branch of of the government in essence. Yeah, and it's kind Google of and Microsoft like, might, might be worse. Might be worse in the state now, even unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily perhaps. in terms of direct co direct coercion, but uh, the amount of data that they get on a daily basis. I guess just like personal financial data, and yeah, Google, Microsoft, they they can hammer you too. Um, I guess there's also kind of the AI angle. The more data you can collect, the more crazier of an AI you can you can come out with. I suppose. Um, yeah, the, the less information they have they have on you, the better, and and. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to show my sponsor again, but, uh, but you know, that's definitely why I, I reckon in pre-search, um, they're decentralized privacy focused, uh, mm -hmm. all their information's, you know, on, on different, uh, you know, different nodes running and, and then that information is not even stored. There's no like central location for it. So across, you know, thousands of, of different computers. So definitely check out pre-search guys. And, and if you use my link, You'll get you'll get fifty pre too. So and I'll have the link in the in the description. But um, but yeah, that's that's yeah. a huge reason Budge, why Budge I, I rec yeah. recommend pre search. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the the search engine problem is like one of the biggest biggest problems today. Um, so obviously, like there obviously there's been the mem memory holding thing, which is ha which has always happened. It's why I've I've ran archives on the LA website since like 2015 because information disappears. It's always disappeared from the internet. Um, but it's, it's getting, it's getting worse. Um, and the search engine problem is, um, you know, one of the biggest, uh, so yeah, I, yeah, pre-search, uh, great. Um, any, anything alternative, cause I, I've tried to use all the alternatives, um, whether it's start page or duck, duck, go, duck, duck, go just pulls the same results as Google. I'm pretty sure start page yeah. has the same thing. I, I think so a lot of them are pulling the same results as Google. So they're useless. Essentially. They just don't track you. Um, but the best one I've found as of late is actually uh, Yandex, which is um, it's it's kind of shitty. A lot of the services that are the best are the Russian ones, and it may not be for positive reasons. But um, Yandex uh, has been the best one um, so far, like as far as like a centralized service. Um, but yeah, pre-search would be would be great. Um, and uh, there's also another one, which it's it's not even a competitor pre-search. It's it's been. Um, it's been around for a long time. People don't really use it. It's it's difficult to use. Um, so that's one of the, one of the problems with a lot of open source software. It's super hard to use. And um, but Yacy is another one of those search engine alternatives that Matthew Amory has been talking about for like I mean almost a decade now since we've been talking. Um, and there's still no. I mean I'm, I'm sure there's development on it, but it's it's pre search is way more popular, um, and that's good. Um, search search is one of the biggest problems. Um, so I'm always happy to hear. Yeah, always happy de to definitely. Use and not even just co not even collecting your information, but like hiding, you know, hiding and and, and censoring your searches. Like, like I think years back I did a a, a Google search. I, I did like three different search engines. It was like DuckDuckGo, Google, and PreSearch. And DuckDuckGo and Google had the had the the same results. But I was googling Jeffrey Epstein. Like, uh, how many times has Bill Clinton um, been to Epstein's island? And like the on the first two pages, there was like nothing, and um, and then with pre search, it was like fourth or or you know third, fourth or fifth. I can't remember. Um, search down had had the had the information that I was looking for. So um, that one search alone was like holy shit. You know, there's 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 a huge difference, and um, it's only going to get worse from here. So um, definitely, you know, get used to using pre search. 
uh, for sure is, is my recommendation. Um, but if there's, what, what I do love about Chris search is that if you do want to change to a different search, um, like if you want to use Google, they've got a really simple, easy, just click of the button. Um, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change the search to Google now, or I'm going to even change the search to YouTube and it's, it will go exactly, um, to, to, you know, YouTube and, and have the same exact search that you, that you typed in. So it makes it a very, very simple and, and easy to, to switch back and forth. And, um, this wasn't my idea today to like completely show pre-search, but, uh, but th there, there's a definitely a reason why I believe in the project and, and there's a reason why I, I tell people about it. As you said, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. There, there's nothing wrong with, um, that's wrong. It's yeah. As long as the, I mean, it's why I hype a lot of the stuff that, or all the stuff that I promote, because it's it's the best shit out there, um, for what people mm -hmm. are trying to achieve. Um, pre search is as far as popular popularity and usability, uh, it seems to be that. So, um, yeah, I yeah, and nothing, just yeah, decentralized alone is nice because all all the information is not in one place, you know. So like, even if they wanted to try to get information off servers, see the information is is, is um, now, if there's like a back door or something, you know, I'm sure that that almost anybody's vulnerable in, in some way, shape, or form. Um, but uh, but even if they wanted to try to get all of your search data, they couldn't because um, it'd be on you know a thousand different. You know, if you did a thousand searches, they'd be each be on a, a different node. They each be on a different server. So you you wouldn't even be able to get that information if you wanted. Uh, um, or or if, or if they could, so um, you know, just having decentralized, you know, just decentralization alone is like important. I, I know that there's pretty good search engines out there that, um, uh, you know, like like some of the Russian ones, but I don't know if they're like all. I know some. I don't think Yandu is. Um, did I pronounce that right? Yandu. I don't think that's yeah, decentralized Yandex. per se, but. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, it's it's no, it's it's probably not. No, it's it's not the it's not the uh, the optimal solution. It's kind of yeah, it's kind of like uh, instead of torrenting, um, like Yandex is very good if you're looking for like the uh, quote unquote um, illegal streaming sites that you can't find on Google. But again, like torrenting or having your own private you know access to those things is a lot better. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't don't don't trust the damn Russians. No, just like it, but. But they're, they're, they 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 let they let a, a little more stuff through right now, um, temporary solution. But yeah, so so de decentralization is is one thing, and I guess one of the other um, revelations from the past couple of years, um, it's something James has been been working on for a long long time with the uh, the ghost, I guess the uh, the ghost system, because um, the entire system ghost system, um, is that like owning the owning owning your infrastructure and the hardware is is also critical because um, you can run all of the de all the best decentralized privacy software. You can run, um, you know, you can run Linux on uh, your normal Windows, you know, laptop that you flat you know flash the OS yourself. Um, but the hardware um, and the infrastructure is a vulnerability. Um, so yeah, that's uh, and uh, yeah, that's one of the the biggest drivers for um, the ghost pads and the ghost phones is if we, we've got a decentralized network like PASNI is, um, and it's obviously always going to be decentralized. We're not all like gather all gathering in the same area is not smart. Um, it's not wise um, security culture wise. I mean, why why don't they ever get like it was like the uh, in terms of like the line of succession for continuity of government? Um, there's a reason they don't they aren't all in the same place at the same time right? right you don't want everyone to get killed and not have anyone to perform continuity of government so it makes sense um yeah same, same concept here um same concept here um so i, I would recommend uh libertyattack.com forward slash privacy tools just check it out um you can flash all this stuff yourself and, and do it yourself um all that's available and jamie and i have talked about extensively um over the past like seven years on podcasts so um the information's out there but if you're like me and you'd just rather outsource that to someone you can actually trust uh then like these are these are, are great routes and there will be a lot a lot more offerings soon um the the one i'll mention um for people looking for like a desktop um alternative um it's not listed yet there's going to be about a dozen new listings in, in the next in the coming months um but we when I mean, we've got up to like um they are called Ghost Stations um, with Ubuntu Creator Studio. This is my main um, podcasting OBS, um, my main like content creation um, Linux computer, and it's been it's been a beautiful transition. Um, 
and it's it's a huge huge computer um huge laptop actually it's just a laptop but it's huge um ghost tablets the ghost tablets are, are fun um smaller versions but i mean anything and anything in between and they're all cheap because the idea i mean i've got like three or four of these laying around um so i've got a few ghost phones laying around um they all serve different purposes for different things and it's not like the first realm where you got to go in and drop like a thousand dollars on a new iphone or some nonsense like that um affordable the idea is yeah you, you have a lot of them for different purposes and then i oh shit we're just talking about you, you, almost did a, you almost did a trump there for a second huge laptop beautiful laptop beautiful uh, <laughs> i'm just, I'm just about that bad wrong. no it's about that <laughs> I, I i talk about these I, I preach these up a lot um well not as much <laughs> as i should probably but i use them every day and i'm i'm to the point where i'm, I'm transitioning everything i use off of windows however i can and yeah, that's you example. almost have we, to we now. Have a, uh, i think i think windows is taking um like windows 11 i think windows 10 maybe too i think they're taking a screenshot of your desktop like every 10 or 15 seconds or something like that crazy um i heard, i heard something on that i know don't quote me guys because i don't exactly know but um but there's some kind of, there I, I heard something about something about that i should definitely uh take a look at that and maybe even do an article on it or something but uh but yeah windows does some real scandalous shit and um like even if you want to like check out the the you take a look at the dark web and not even buy anything on it um because there, there's actually like a lot of like informational uh not even i'm not even talking about like merchant stores or any or any any of that crap I, i'm just talking about like there's a lot of like informational stuff um on the dark web that's just like regular news like even new york times has like some like a dark a, a dark net web page but um yeah but uh but yeah even just looking at something like that on on the dark web i think you've got you know, you, you don't even want to look at it using Windows OS. You you want to use no, you know, Linux. So yeah, the the only way to use it on a Windows machine is if you had like a Linux Tails bootable USB drive, which those are those are great for um just for privacy or if you're extremely paranoid. Um, that's okay too. Both are are certainly okay and reasonable. Um, but no, like uh yeah, yeah no it's uh it's you're you're exactly right, and it's, it's to the point now where so on our um I have got a distiller a family distillery and i handle all the technical stuff um and i we so they the computer the laptop that um they bought for it like five years ago had a 128 gigabyte hard drive on it and at this point well i guess uh, within well, like the past four months ago um like 95 percent of that storage space was eaten up by like updates on like just windows so like you couldn't even download a picture or like just like, like anything small like an email um because the the space is all you know was messed up so i put i put a new a new ssd drive in it terabyte two terabyte drive and i had the hardest time ever installing windows apparently it's a it's a common problem with that model so i just said f it i'm just throwing ubuntu on there um this is the the, this, the work computer that my parents use all of that so i threw ubuntu creator studio on it put a windows theme on it with a windows background and I changed the name of the various files um, so that it would look the same. Um, and with what they use, they'll never know. But it's kind of a test too, like especially as of like yesterday, like the the big um, um, there is that uh, um, that big bug and the um, whatever it was Office three six five software. Um, yeah, if you're yeah, on Microsoft yeah. or some company like that nowadays, like Jesus, like that's that's bad. Like it just shows that like, it's not. Um, and this is how you know, like the. Like the, um, you know, there's a lot of fear mongering about like a cyber war, like, a, you know, cyber attacks and things like that. And it's like, there doesn't have to be a cyber attack. If one centralized, you know, like, I guess a cyber security solution, like was it CrowdStrike, is on like 90% of machines, computers working, or like some really high percentage, there has to be no conspiracy. It's just like, it's turn off a switch. Um, like, that's it. Um, which is why, yeah, the solutions that you know like that when you when you look into how easy how easy data storage is, how easy it is to just like you know flash an entire hard drive onto something else, have a backup, um, you realize a lot of the stuff that like within the you know the state, um, like oh the information just disappeared, yeah bullshit, it did disappear, yeah. that doesn't happen. Yeah, um, you can yeah, you, I mean, you can prevent that with like twenty five dollar hard drives. Um, so with your big budget, yeah. I bet you can figure it out. But yeah. Yeah, I think Windows could even like just have a bad update or something. You know, the bad update goes on to thousands of computers, and and bam, man. Right. Like um, like especially especially how you were saying yesterday with that uh, what was it three five five six problem or or some shit. Um, 
but yeah, I, I posted a bunch of memes on the uh, the Windows um, controversy yesterday or, or cyber attack or yeah. So I think we're pretty much going to wrap it up here real mm-hmm. quick. Uh, where where can people find you? Of yeah, um, tax all that passing it. Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. Well, I it's uh, been great chatting again. I wasn't expecting to get into some of the the tech stuff, but that's been my. Um, especially in the past week or two. It's been a lot of tech problems. Um, so I guess it, it makes sense. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, vaniapodcast.com is a place to go for for all things Vanu, the podcast, a lot of free audiobooks, uh, second round book on strategy, audiobooks on there. Um, a lot of audiobooks, um, a lot of audio to me, to me to mention. The hashtag war one, not yet. Um, that one still needs to be done. Um, but uh, uh, free books, free audiobooks, um, the entire archives, all of it's there libertyattack.com for yeah anything books privacy tools um we even got wellness products uh on the libertyattack libertyattack.com website uh catalog now um or as apothecary uh with like uh, comfrey and black drawing salve uh there's jewelweed salve which is really popular right now with poison ivy um and then uh, i just released uh, the pain liberator um with you know accurate with uh, uh the same branding as you would expect from from my outfits uh the pain liberator with uh, um, dimethyl sulfoxide dmso and aspirin um, it's a localized, uh, hypercharged pain relief. So, um, you know, it's hard to do anything liberation wise if you don't feel good and if uh, you're constantly in pain. So I can help you with liberating with that too. Um, I've got a lot, a lot of great feedback on it and the, and there's an entire pain liberator product line coming now. Um, just started experimenting with, uh, icy hot, uh, with, uh, with menthol crystals, um, like a natural, healthy, icy hot for more than just pain. So yeah, health and wellness stuff's on there. And, uh, then yeah, lastly, the free public of Pasnia is, uh, you know, the rebuilding of, uh, the first realm of the survival society, the, all the atrocities that have brought you to, you know, to be tuning into the Agoras Nexus uh, podcast right now. Um, there's a need for alternatives. So we're building a, a an alternative parallel network, um, Found upon uh, volunteerism, truth, and uh, uh, and all of those uh, all of those things. So, um, yeah, Pasnia.com is the website. You can make a stakeholder. You can just take a look at uh, you know what we're working on in, in various areas. I was just working today on uh, health and wellness general guide, um, which uh, I will just release for free. And uh, it's a lot of a lot of health and wellness knowledge uh, from the past like three or four years condensed even longer than actually four or five years condensed into um, one document for you to use uh, for your practical uses um, and not having to rely upon Babylon pharmaceuticals or those that will, you know, that will kill you when they try to heal you. Um, that's uh, not the best salad to go. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it um, in terms of, in terms of the plugging stuff. Um, but yeah, any, anything I do, it's, it's, uh, I believe in it. And a lot of times I, you know, make it here, make it, we make it here ourselves, like the conference self, the conference room here. Um, we've got, I guess we've got, we've got canned goods on there too. If you want to order some pickles or, um, I guess I think there's cowboy candy on there still and some other things, but, um, yeah, I mean, any, anything we can do for you, we, we try, we're trying to make it out there and available, um, at Liberty Attack Publications, um, LibertyAttack.com. So, um, it's been great talking, man. I, I, I always love chatting. Um, we need to get you back on Vaughn here at some point too. Yeah, man. I'd, I'd love to come on. I've, I mean, uh, I've done, uh, I probably have some stuff to say now. I've, I've done, it's been quite a while since that last happened, uh, since, since I, since I was off on. So, but yeah, I'm going to wrap it up with a quote here. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Uh, the quote here is, uh, just as the state is obsolete as a means of defense against foreign governments and private criminals. So politics are obsolete as a means of defense against the state, political reform, revolutions, or education at most changes rulers and slogans. It does not bring about enduring freedom. In a community of a few hundred, democratic procedures can be helpful. In a nation of millions, they are only placebos. That's a Vanu Life, March 1973. So that's a Rayu quote, right? It is, yes. Uh, Yeah, one of my favorite Rayu quotes. Yeah, back in like 1967. Yeah, Yeah. hammering down on the, the, yeah, the fear industrial complex. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's such a good quote. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Agoras Nexus is out. Vonya Life 2025 Resurrected. Introduction Back in March 1973, Rayo and many of the most hardcore self liberators of the time, and likely even today, published a massive 75,000 word issue of Vonya Life 
that is shockingly relevant and of immense value, even today. And while that was a highlight, there was also an entire zine series of Vonya Life, which I recently digitized. As Rayo finished up those last words of transcribing, it was with a heavy heart dot until the idea hit him like a collapsing roof of a badly engineered underground shelter. Vonya Life should most certainly be resurrected, just as the overall freedom strategy of Vonya has in the modern day and age. And if you know anything about Vonya Life, you know some of the greatest content came from contributors. That's where you come in. Let's dive into the plan. The plan. Vonya Life, March 1973, was the only issue released in that year. Similarly, we should aim for one book a year, the first being Vonya Life 2025. That will give ample time to acquire and create content, and to have plenty to report on as far as developments, or setbacks, of our liberated lifestyles. Content Section 1, Situations and Searches Lifestyle Reports from Self-Liberators, a report about your liberated lifestyle, things you've learned, your goals, what led you to venuism slash self-liberation, etc. Reviews of books, equipment, organizations, tips and tricks, etc. Information that you feel is valuable to pass on, that's not in article form. Section 2, General Strategy Back in Von Ulyf's heyday, topics sought out included, Van Nomadism, Pedestrian Nomadism, Wilderness Von U, International Travel, Family and Children, Intentional Communities, New Country Projects, Financial Independence, Health Liberation, Von U in Cities, and Underground Shelters and Troglodism, we still want articles on any and all of those topics, but additional ones include, private communications, sovereign networking, volumeing in cities in the 2020s, alternative housing solutions, etc. If you're curious about your topic in particular, just ask. Examples of both will be posted at volumepodcast.com slash the air 2025. Timeframes any submissions must be made by July 1, 2025. After a few months of editing and preparing, we will aim for a fall 2025 release. Notes this is not a general, send us an article submission to fill space. It has to be of the caliber that Vonya Life deserves and was founded upon, hardcore solutions slash hardcore action, no political crusading and no collective movementism, the principle of voluntarism, that all interactions should be voluntary, must be maintained. I.e., don't siphon, steal, gas to fund your van nomadism. General proofreading slash editing will be done on every article, maintaining each author's individual voice, but as always, editorial designs have to be made. Email submissions, questions, ideas to, shane at libertyunderattack.com.